Okay, so we're getting into, first of all, the IAM service in AWS. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. And as you can expect from the name, that basically means users. So the whole of your AWS security is going to be in IAM. There's going to be users, groups, and roles. You have to remember this, and you surely will remember them by the end of this course. Root account is the account with which you create your AWS accounts. And basically, you should only use it the very first time, and then you should never use it again or even share it with someone, because your root account is the account and the user that has the most power. The users then must be created with proper permissions, and we'll see how to do this in the lab. And IAM is going to be at the center of AWS. So every service in AWS is going to be uh, helped with IAM for security. Now we'll have policies within IAM, and these policies will be written in JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and they're basically a way to write data. So if you don't know anything about JSON, I strongly recommend just go online for a quick tutorial on Google to get uh, started with JSON, because I just assume that as a developer, you probably know what that is. So how do we visualize IAM at a high level? Well, we have the users, and the users is usually going to be a physical person, like you or me. We are a physical person, so I will get an account in IAM, and you surely will get an account in IAM. That account should not be the root account. Now, users can be grouped together, and group is whatever you want it to be, but usually it's by functions, for example, admin, DevOps, or by teams, such as engineering, design, or anything you want. Overall, groups, and you should know this, contain users, okay? So this, this way, you can apply permissions to groups, and users will inherit these permissions. Finally, we have roles, and roles are only for internal usage within the AWS resources and services, okay? So roles is what we're going to give to machines. So this is a strong distinction to make. Users is going to be for a physical person, and roles is going to be for a machine. Now, overall, as I said, policies are JSON documents, and they will define what each of these building blocks, users, groups, and roles can and cannot do. We'll learn how to write policies, don't worry, and we'll play with all these things at length during this course. Now, IAM, you should know, has a global view. When you create a user or a group or a role in your AWS accounts, it will be across all the regions, and that kind of makes sense. As I said, the policies are in JSON, you can enable multi-factor authentication for your root account and for your users, and that's strongly recommended. Now, IAM comes with managed policies, so basically you don't need to rewrite the whole policies. You can reuse some that Amazon put together for you for ease of management. And we'll see in depth and length how to create IAM policies. Right now, we'll just take it easy and do a soft introduction. Something you'll hear me say over and over and over in this course is that it's best to give users or roles the minimal amount of permissions they need to perform their job. And that's called the least privileged principles. And so you absolutely want to make sure that you don't overpower any single person in your organization or any single application or server. And you will hear me say this so many times. Now, for big enterprises, you use something called IAM Federation. We will not use it in this course because we're not a big enterprise, we're just users. But basically, if a big enterprise has like a bare own repository of users, such as Active Directory, you know, they can integrate this with IAM. And this way, the users of a big enterprise can log into AWS using their company credentials. This uses something called the SAML standard. And Microsoft Active Directory, for example, is one of these big users of the SAML standard. So it's just something you need to know about for the exam, but we will not practice this. So just a quick brain dump, and this, I'm going to feel like I'm your father right now, but I have to say it once because my conscience needs to be clear. One IAM user per physical person. You do not share an IAM user with anyone. Your account is your account and no one else's. One IAM role per application. Each application has its own life cycle, their own independence, and so you want one IAM role per application. Nothing shared. Your IAM credentials should never be shared. Again, as I said, your IAM user and your credentials are your own. You never share them with anyone. Now, never, ever, 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 I think I said it that many times, write IAM credentials in code, ever. Okay, this is extremely bad if you put your credentials in code, because if that code ends up in someone's hand or on GitHub or on the cloud or whatever, and someone intercepts them, 
I promise you someone will mine Bitcoin in your account and you'll end up with a $20,000 bill in one day. And that happened for real. You can Google it. Okay, so never, ever, ever write I am credentials in code, ever. Never use your root account except for initial setup. That's super important because the root account is kind of the key to the kingdom. If you lose it or if you compromise it, you're done. So your root account is something you should create at once and then lock in a safe and never use ever again. So as I said, never use the root I am credentials. Now, I sound like someone who's trying to scare you and I am and it's true. Your AWS account can do a lot of things, okay, and can cost a lot of money if you misuse it or someone misuses it for you. So be careful around credentials and how you deal with them. Apart from that, let's go in the next lecture for the labs and hands-on.